uh, the Right Honorable Speaker, colleague members of the August House, for the record, I'm Lieutenant General James Mujira, one of the representatives of the Uganda People's Defense Forces, which is the other family of the late Colonel retired Charles Okero Patrick Ngora. I do rise, second the motion for a resolution of parliament to pay tribute to my friend, my boss, and comrade in arms in the Ministry of Defense and Veteran Affairs and the Uganda People's Defense Forces, the late Honorable Okero Charles Patrick Ngora, who lost his life in a cold-blooded murder at the hands of his supposed protector and defender and breathed his last on Tuesday, the 2nd of May, 2023. I do extend the deepest condolences from the UPDF fraternity to the beloved family, the friends, members of parliament, cabinet ministers, and His Excellency the President on the untimely death of Honorable Colonel Charles Ngora. As UPDF, we are mourning and paying growing tribute to one of us, a brave soldier who joined the military in 1979, according to the Army records, at the age of 21, and rose through the ranks from private to full colonel at the time of his retirement in 2005, after 26 years of distinguished service to his motherland. Right Honorable Speaker, we are celebrating the life of a professional officer who undertook various military courses, including officer's basic course in 1992, radio systems course in 1998, and battalion commander's course in 2005. Right Honorable Speaker, we are paying tribute to a courageous, decisive, committed, and accomplished artillery commander who fought and won many battles against the Sudan-backed Joseph Konyaled Rhodes Resistance Army, notably the capture of Kaya Town in the then Sudan during an operation codenamed Mwisho One, and the capture of a number of strongholds, enemy strongholds in Sudan of Magui, Tinjiri, Kit Junction, Aru Camp, up to Jablain during Operation Mwisho II, where he was commanding 100 millimeter artillery under the overall command of General Katumba uh, Wamara. Right Honorable Speaker, we are paying tribute to an officer who played a big role during Operation Safe Haven in the Democratic Republic of Congo, where he was the field commander of all the UPDF artillery and air defense units involved in defensive offensive operations inside Congo against the ADF terrorist group, which had wreaked havoc in our country, including the Chitwamba massacres and a series of improvised explosive device bombings in Kampala City. Right Honorable Speaker, we are paying tribute to a variant commander who played a prominent role during counterinsurgency operations in northern Uganda in the Menakuru area and as a brigade commander of the Opit Best 501 Brigade, which earned him the praise name, Mashodogo, meaning fire is back. The late Kano Kero Ngora contributed immensely to breaking, conduce, to breaking the back of the LRA in the area, which in turn created a conducive environment that enabled Wanainchi in internally displaced camps to return home and resume their normal activities. Macho Dogo became a household name in the Rango region and is synonymous with the return of peace and security in the area. We, therefore, in the UPDF, salute his efforts and invaluable contribution to ending the LRA mayhem in northern Uganda and for contributing to the bringing of peace, security, and stability that is currently enjoyed in the region. Right, Honorable Speaker, the late Honorable Kero Ngora was a true patriot who always had his country and community at heart. In the military, 
were men and women of action. We believe more in motivational actions than motivational speaking. Macho Dong was a man of few words, but extremely pragmatic, who exercised hands-on leadership. He was also a very good political mobilizer, as evidenced by the massive support he received when, upon retiring from the army, contested and was voted massively as chairperson LOC5 and later member of parliament for Oyam North County. He was determined to free his people out of poverty and worked towards improving their standards of living. At a personal level, the late Colonel Ngora and I were decorated the same day, 18 years ago, in October 2005, to the rank of Colonel. And when, I was appoint when he was appointed by boss as Minister of State for Defense, I used to interact with him closely in his office and during our travels abroad to attend international military and defense exhibitions when we would have close constructive discussions. Less than a month before his assassination, we did share a table and a drink at a social function here in Kampala. Right, Honorable Speaker, colleague members, before I take leave, let me seize the occasion to briefly say things, three things. One, to join you in condemning in the strongest terms the insensitive, merciless, provocative, silly jokes on social media celebrating celebrating and making fun of the circumstances surrounding the tragic death in cold blood of our deceased comrade at the hands of his bodyguard. <coughs> this callous and cultured behavior no doubt runs counter to our time-honored and cherished African culture and values of humanity, Ubuntu. His family members, friends, and the entire nation is still in grief and mourning the passing on of this great son of Uganda. So please, those responsible out there, at least spare the family to first mourn, mourn their loved one. Secondly, right honorable speaker, the circumstances surrounding his death have been reduced by some people salary and welfare issues of soldiers, domestic workers, maids, chefs, gatekeepers, etc., as you have seen on the media, social media. Whereas this could be the first such an assassination case in Uganda, it is certainly not the first in the world. We have had assassinations even of more senior people by own guards. For example, that of President Rora Kabira of the Democratic Republic of Congo, Premier Indira Gandhi, of India, President Abdul Rashid al shamake of Somalia, and President Anwar Sadat of Egypt, who was assassinated by his soldiers during a victory parade, among others. Speaking for the UPDF, I want to state, without any fear of contradiction, that the UPDF and its forerunner, the National Resistance Army, which I have now served for almost 40 years, has never been a mercenary force. Our service to our motherland has always been and is out of patriotism and ideological conviction. Ours has been sacrificed through and through so that our country becomes peaceful, secure, and stable. Right, Honorable Speaker, that is the reason Uganda is an island of peace in a volatile region. So the assassination of the minister cannot just be reduced to an issue of raw salary and allowances. This is in this spring period. Yes, there could be, and indeed, are issues to be addressed. But please, let us not sow seeds of anarchy, hatred, fear, and animosity, where even us, members of parliament, we fear to go back to our homes because we fear our maids, our askaris, and our chefs. Finally, right on, right on the speaker, in the military we don't speculate. That's why before a, any military operation, we carry out reconnaissance on the enemy to establish the exact enemy strength in terms of personnel and equipment, the enemy locations and intentions, etc. 
I therefore enjoin and beseech you gardens out there stop speculation. An official board of inquiry has been set up. Let us wait for its findings. As I conclude, right honorable speaker and colleague members, let me once again extend our deepest and heartfelt condolences to the bereaved family. The gentle giant has gone to sleep. Let him sleep peacefully. May the almighty God rest his soul in eternal peace. I beg you. Thank you. Thank you so much, honorable members. As we open the debate to pay tribute to the fearless Ugandan, the honest one, the gallant soldier of the land, the peaceful lover who made sacrifice for our country. I want us to be mindful as members of parliament that yesterday or the other day, Honorable Charles Angola was seated where you're seated, was like you. And tomorrow, we are going to be like him. I want us to debate with the dignity, with the respect to the dead and to the family. I plead with you not to say anything that may hurt the family in any other way. Because he used to be like us, and we will be like him. May I now open the debate?